Hey guys, Stephen here and welcome back to another installment of the String Doctor. Um, today we're going to talk about a little simple repair sometimes you have to make anytime you've got a newer guitar with a polyurethane finish on it. Oftentimes this stuff's pretty thick over the finish. This one's naturally a pretty thick poly because the naturally finished guitar doesn't have any stain or anything on the wood. And oftentimes, you know, when you're beating them, banging around, playing them, you get a nick. Now, this stuff's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to scratch, pretty hard to take off. Or nitrocellulose is very, you know, very soft finish. It's a lot easier to scratch. But when you do nick this stuff or you hit it hard enough, it'll crack almost like a plastic because it is like a plastic coating. Um, this is the used one you know, we've been working on, featured in several other videos. We've put a four-way switch in it now. Um... You know, change the strings out, adjust the neck, got it set up really nice, change the pick guard, just, you know, it's all about making it more to your liking. And when I'm looking at this guitar, it's got a couple of small nicks in it in the clear coat. I'm going to move up close to the camera for just a second so I'm zooming in. And if you look right here in this shot, and hopefully I'm making a good shot, see this nick right here. That's a pretty bad nick. You can feel it pretty bad with your finger. I'm not, there's another one here, but it's not severe enough that I can really feel it. This is not the worst one. It looks like someone maybe, you know, set the guitar down or something, kind of set on the floor, propped it up, didn't use a stand or something. But it's got a pretty good gash here, and it's got, ooh, you pay attention to that. We're going to focus on this guy right here. See how that one's really low? We're going to focus on fixing both of these. And to fix these nicks in the clear coat, so I actually got one more, there's three of them that we're going to fix. To fix these nicks in the clear coat, we're going to use a really, really simple, um, really simple thing. You, you may already actually have some laying around your house somewhere, but we're just going to use a little bit of simple liquid super glue. One material we're going to need, we're going to need a little bit of sandpaper to sand it, um, a razor blade, and some cellophane tape like the... I like the invisible scotch tape. That one tends to do really well. Can you have to use it on the razor blade? But it's just a matter of flowing a little bit of glue into these spots, giving it time to dry. And once it dry, y'all like to give it a day to let it dry. Use at least six to eight hours to let the stuff really harden up because you're not bonding to anything. You're just flowing it down in there. And then once it does, you go back. We'll go back with a razor blade, scrape it down, sand it. And finally, we'll smooth it out with some different rubbing compounds and all. And hopefully get it looking really nice. It's not going to be a perfect repair. You'll probably still be able to see the cracks below the surface, but at least you won't be able to feel it with your finger. And it, it does seal the crack in the wood. It protects the wood from anything getting down in any moisture or anything that can make the clear coat peel off, anything like that. I mean, sure, if it's an older guitar, it's kind of beat up and adds some character. But on something that's got a really nice, pretty finish like this, I want to keep it pretty. Besides, these are not my scratches. I didn't put these scratches in it. If they were scratches acquired while I was playing it, it might mean something, might have a story. But I don't know the story, so I'm going to try to remedy this and, and do something about it. And again, if you have a poly finished guitar and all, and an acoustic, and electric, anything that you want to finish like this, this is a quick and easy way to finish it without taking the finish off the guitar and completely having to disassemble it and put it back together and all using some simple normal household things like super glue. So that being said, we'll get right into this thing. Uh, let me move some things around on the bench and kind of prop this thing up when we put some glue in it and we'll get started. All right. Okay guys, getting right into this, we're going to start our simple super glue repair. Um, just need some rubbing alcohol, a simple rag. We are going to just clean these spots thoroughly, make sure there's no wax or anything else in them. Make sure you get your guitar propped up safely where it won't fall and keep a hand on it. I don't, my prop's not exactly great, but I don't have four hands to hold it and do the work too. So we're gonna take a, just a simple clean rag. Hit the sock again. No, it's not one that I've worn. We're gonna work on these three spots here. Make sure we can see them in the camera. Yeah, that one's pretty bad there. This one's kind of indented, it's not terrible. And this one's pretty bad, it looks almost like that one got scraped on something. So we're gonna fill them, just work on making them look a little bit better. Just gonna we'll clean around them pretty good, just kind of this whole entire area, just to make sure that there's not any kind of wax or any of the Dr. Ducks, you know, ax wax that I like to use on them and all, because that stuff is slick. And if it's got that embedded in it, it's not gonna stick very well. 
kind of small indention there, but it's not nearly enough that I'm worried about. I'm only worried about the ones with the crack. Okay, getting into this, I'm gonna clean off the tip of this stuff. It's kind of cringy looking. I'm gonna start on the one closest to the camera here. Just wanna flow some of the tip, do it careful, because this stuff runs like crazy. And really simply, just wanna flow a drop down on it. Just hit it where it can drop down on there and, and flow into it. Because we're gonna remove whatever excess that we have. Don't wanna to use too much. And if you have to go back and do it again, again here. And make sure I got it feel good. You should fill that area. And this one, kind of crappy here. We're gonna fill it up pretty good. I said the, it'll still be a visible spot here, but at least it'll be filled smooth. You won't feel it when you rub your hands across it. And these guys should be pretty good there. I'm looking at a crack in it, unfortunately. Okay. And once that's done, we're just gonna cap off our super glue. And pretty much just let this thing sit. No. Um, see, the super glue on the back of it, well, it doesn't say how long this does, and I'm throwing away the package by now. But as long as you got good super glue and stuff, but it's probably gonna take a good six to eight hours to harden completely, because it takes a while for the air to get under it and all. We've got a pretty good bubble, especially on that one. We're gonna wait them all to dry until we get to them. Next tools we'll need is just a simple single-sided razor blade. Um, like I said, some cellophane tape, like uh, like the Scotch tape, the invisible tape's really nice. And I'll show you how to prepare your razor blade and that kind of stuff for this repair. Cause you don't wanna scrape off anything that's not what you did. And when you scrape it off, it'll leave the glue slightly raised that you made the repair with. And then you'll go back and scrape it off and you have, it, it gets it pretty smooth just not completely done and uh, just leaves a little bit to sand and you'll sand it with several different grains of sandpaper wet sanding every one of them using a very small amount of paper on a block to get it nice and smooth and then we'll use some rubbing compound a couple of soft rags to down to a fine polish and when it's done you should barely you'll i mean you'll be able to see a small amount without you know really nice expensive sanders but as far as doing it at home you won't be able to see it nearly as bad as these uh, nasty little nicks were in it but anyhow we're gonna cut the camera off for now give this thing time to dry and when we come back we'll take our razor blade and we'll start in on uh, scraping this stuff down getting ready to sand down and refinish it all right see you in a few All right, guys, we're back again. We've got the tele propped up. Um, got the holes with some super glue on them and all. They're, they don't look the best, but hey, this is do it yourself and all, so might as well show my mistakes along with the way it's supposed to be done. You can see they're all filled up up above the surface of the clear coat at this point. When you get to this point, we've got to make a small two. You need some simple, you know, scotch tape, cellophane tape, you know, like that. And uh, what we'll do, getting ready to tear it off here. Did you get a single-sided razor blade like this? Just simple single-sided utility blades. And our widest one is this one. So I want to make the surface as wide as that. So what I'm gonna do is tear off a small piece of tape. And uh, there. a small piece of tape like this. I'm gonna come right up here. It's about middle ways of it. I want to tape it very close to the blade. Be careful we don't cut yourself. You just got that thin edge right there. I'm going to tear us off another small piece of tape. Don't need very much, just a small amount. I'm going to get my finger up, get it back off later. See if I can change it. So I'm going to flip it over. Come on to the other side of the work. Make sure that little line and it clears the work right next to it that's not an exact science just needs to be pretty close and photo that way the only surface of the blade is just the widest part of your work then you're going to come over here get your thumbs behind it and just slowly start working this thing see the tape keeps it from getting down to the work too far and just slow go you may have to work it back toward you either way just keep the 
Keep your fingers on the side. Don't press down in the middle of the blade here where you press down and gouge into your work. You know, and just take off a little bit at a time. Okay. Let's do another spot here. We'll work on that. That's the worst one there. Okay. There again, I'm going to work it back toward me a little bit more. Just work slow. Don't try to take it all off at once. Now we're getting down to the work a little bit better. For some reason, this thing cratered. I guess it decided to dry like that. But we're already looking better. I want to clean up around it some. It kind of sucks, but... I mean, you know, if you don't care about the crack, you can leave this alone, I'm sure. But I do care a bit. I'm going to try to make it look better. That one's actually going to need a little drop of glue put back in it. That one's not. Still got a small crater right in the center of it. I guess it was a lot worse than I thought it was. What about super glue? You can go back over it. Well... That took off a nice amount of the crap that was around it. And it'll get to a point where the razor blade's just not grabbing any material off of it. After you work it from all the angles. And that's when it's pretty much time for a little bit of sandpaper. When we get into that, a little bit after we get them all cleaned off. We'll work on this guy a little bit. This one you have to be careful because you get on the edge over here, you wobble. You know, gouge in your clear coat, so you want to work it from the flattest part of it. And just work it slow. And it's going to take being worked more than once. Kind of like this right here. Let's see. It's getting better. Here we're going to be really careful. I keep pressure on one side of the blade. Not take off nothing but glue. Again, we use sandpaper to get it super smooth. Right, and then you can go top it like this. And really see if you got anything left of it. If it's still scraping, it's probably a raised spot. It still needs to be taken off of it. Well, that's got it pretty good. So that one still needs a little work. And we got one here for pretty bad bubble. Let's turn the camera back just a little bit. Can't really see the raised spot, and that one's still gonna leave the ugly spot because it get down the wood. At least it'll be smooth when you rub your hand across and you won't feel it as much. This is not a perfect science. The more you do it and get used to it, the better you'll get at it. Like this guy here. Anything's better than that crater it had in it. And plus, this was an open spot in the clear coat. Moisture could get down in there, and that could be a real problem. This will take a little more finesse because it's on the edge. That's a pretty common nick. It looks like it was set down on something hard. Maybe on concrete or asphalt or something. And again, we're going to work it from every angle that we can. It's going to take some sandpaper to get this guy smooth for sure. The first time I ever heard of doing this was super glue. I'm talking about, you're kidding me. You're going to use super glue? I mean, I, I've done a little bit of painting. And I know how important, you know, good clear coats and materials are, especially in automotive stuff. You're going to use something like clear coat to fix fenders poly? Are you kidding me? But it actually works really well. Short of just setting it down and re-clearing it. This spot's already looking a lot better. You can still see some of the cracks that were in the, in the finish of it now. Well, actually, this was a pretty bad gouge. It was pretty nasty looking. 
I'm just trying to clean off some of the excess where I don't have as much sanding to do on it. And uh, let's see. And that one looks a ton better than it did. So that one's still got a little bit of a spot here in it. I'm going to put a little more glue in it. Maybe a tiny bit on that one. If I can get my fingernail down on that. A tiny spot on me. We're just going to put a drop of glue right here. I need to come out. Small drop of glue on the center of that. Let it sink down in there good. That's be all we need. And I'm going to put a tiny spot on this because I've still got a low spot on it. That one seems to be good. But I'm still got a low spot here. Mm -hmm. Probably more glue than I need. All right, y'all. Well, that's how you use super glue to fill your hose. Uh, I'm gonna wait on these to dry a little bit more. We'll go back to the razor blade. Finish getting them nice and smooth like that one is. That one's ready for sandpaper. These are not quite there yet. And then we'll go back and show you how to polish it out and really make it look nice. Just using simple, you know, simple t-shirt cloths, just simple polish and stuff like that that you can buy. Um, you know, I'm, about to use, I'm probably gonna use a medium, uh, compound here and then finally finishing out with a, a fine compound don't think i'll need a coarse compound because we're not actually you know polishing up rough paint or anything you know but we'll show you how to do that and how to get as good a finish you can by hand especially going to be in the wet sand and different grits of sandpaper and stuff and you know start out with I, maybe a 600 or 800 hoping i can get away with an 800 and we'll go down to a thousand. I'll, we'll go all the way down to like 2,000 grit sandpaper. The time we do it, it'll be super slick, just a tiny bit dull, really to polish out. We will not sand any more area than what we have to. We'll get this thing looking great again. But that's about it for now. And when we come back, we'll finish up sanding this thing, getting it ready to polish. All right, guys, we're back again working on the super glue repair of the uh, small hose here now since the last time we looked at it I had to come back and put a little more glue in these this one's nice and flush with the surface i mean you can still see the crack in the clear coat but you can't feel it water can't get down in it so you can't got to worry about it getting down in there and ruining the wood and cause it expand or rot or anything a lot smoother to the touch they're not perfect you can still see them You're still gonna see them sure just sanding down refinish the entire guitar we're not gonna do this it's not a show piece it's not a great restoration and all that kind of thing it's just a player but we're going to clean this thing up go back to our trusty razor blade with the tape on it see the center section here is the width of the repair we're just going to go back over the repair kind of scrape over it a little bit scrape it that way right in the middle of the repair and just look for any more of the clear coat that comes off of this thing which is not really clear coat it'll be the super glue the clear of it We'll work it both ways, kind of from every angle. And once we're pretty satisfied with it, and I am with that, same thing here. These are on the edge, so we can say as flat as you can and kind of work it toward the edge. It's not perfect, so you have to go by feel on these and really be careful. Get it pretty close. And finally, this one, it's on a flat part here, so we're going to scrape it this way. And they're all pretty smooth. Well, now we're ready to get, start doing the finishing, probably the most boring part of it. These are pretty smooth. There's really no rough edge. If you scrape it good with the blade, there won't be any rough edges. For this, you're gonna need some various grits of sandpaper. I'm gonna start out with a thousand grit. I cut this off a thousand grit piece. I wrote it on there so you don't forget which one. Start off with a thousand, going to 1200, to 1500, to 2000. Then I've got some 2500s, probably overkill, but. Probably 1,800 to 2,000 is going to be plenty. I've got this little small sanding block thing, just something foam, just something easier to hold up here to keep it flatter to sand with. I'm gonna start out with my 1,000 grit. I'm just kind of fold it over the edge that I'm working with. That way it's easy to hang on to. 
I don't want to sand with a lot because I don't want to take out a huge area. As a matter of fact, I want to thin this thing down a little bit. I don't want to sand that big of a spot. I'm going to save all the strips for something for later. Okay. Like I, said, I don't want to sand a huge area. So I'm going to kind of fold it over like this where I can hang on to it. i got this mask off with some tape and some paper to keep water from running down because we are going to wet sand this for that. Just get you a typical spray bottle. Just plain old tap water. Put a tiny drop of dishwashing liquid. And if you shake it up, it'll bubble up. That keeps the paper from clogging up and it keeps it easier to sand. And just... Spray a pretty decent amount of water on it. Don't need a crazy amount. I like to wet the paper that I'm using. And just keep your water nearby to clean up with. And we're just going to start and just do a small circular motion. Since we worked on the whole area, but you don't ever want to use your finger on a flat surface. Sometimes you have to use it on the edges like this, but it's not great to use your finger. Reposition my paper a little bit here. You start using your finger, you start gouging down in it, you get grooves from where your finger's at. You can see the color of the water. I mean, it's actually got some material coming off. It's an ugly spot in the strap, but I'm gonna fix it too while we're polishing. And we just wanna work that whole area with that first grid of sandpaper to get it nice. Keep your towel nearby. Wipe off your work every now and then. Get it pretty dry and take a look at it. There's still some pretty good sanding scratches in here, and you're gonna put sanding scratches in it with the first grit. But use your finger now. If there's nothing that snags on or anything, you probably got a pretty good repair there. You probably pretty well done. You don't have to go back to any more sandpaper. I'm gonna do a little more sanding with a 1200. I'm a thousand grit rather, and we'll be back just a second. Okay, guys. Back again, we've sanded it some with a thousand, got it wiped off and dry. You can see the dull part of it now where we've sanded on it. Most of the major sanding scratches are out of it. You can still see a few, look at it real close. That's why we're going down the grip. Um, the repair feels pretty good. I can't feel it with my finger. I can't scratch anything on it. Fingernails are a really good tool because if it snags on something, it's gonna snag on cloth, the case, or anything else, you're still gonna feel it. Biggest thing is with these, and you're still gonna see them, but they're gonna look a lot better when we polish it out, but it's still gonna be a lot smoother. Water can't get down in this crack. This one's down the wood pretty good. That one was as well. This one's really bad. You actually have green knocked out of that one. It looked like someone like, set it down <clears throat> almost like it hit a piece of asphalt or something. Well, same thing, we got our 1200 grit. Gonna wet our work again. It doesn't take a crazy amount of water. Wet the paper again. And using our block, just gonna sand really smooth. Just a little bit of pressure, not much. Let the paper do the work. Don't bear down in it, or you wear it. We'll wear down into the finish, and um, you'll leave a lot of really nasty sanding marks. Looks like there was a spot here around the strap button. It looks like it's been nicked on. I think I can sand the scratch out of it. Makes you feel like you're done. Pretty good job. I'm normally just sand the one little small area, but since we've got three or four here, it's gonna be easier to polish out the whole entire area. Okay, wipe it off, see what we're looking at. Dish soap in your water is really important. It keeps it from gumming up in the paper really bad. Okay, you see a little white under that mark. That was pretty good though. Let's see. Hope I don't get my head in the water. A little low spot there, but it'll polish in, you won't see it. I'm seeing less and less sandy scratches. A spot right here I want to address. Just want to go over a tiny bit more. Come back in, we'll go to our next piece of sandpaper, and you'll see it start to polish out a little bit, look a little less dull as we go, and it'll look a little better. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are getting down to it now. We're down to some 1,500. Make sure this coat of water doesn't go in the strap button hole. You see there's a haze over it. see a lot fewer scratches after we sand it with that 1,200 pretty well. We're gonna hit it with some 1,500 now. Wet our work again, wet our paper. You know, still same old method, not exactly rocket surgery here. We forgot our pad good. Same thing, just start up. 
same amount of pressure, just stand easily and lightly. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry on this, you'll be fine. Pop it off again. Get dry. Just a lot of wiping, a lot of working. Make this look good. Again, we're pretty smooth now. I can't feel any imperfection in this little spot with it. I actually feel more over here, some of the old clear coat than I do right here. That feels pretty good. It's almost undetectable. It's not perfect. Obviously, the longer you work with this, the better it's going to be. Uh, anytime you got a hole like that, make sure you tape it up. That strap button hole, obviously. And, uh, and we'll take it off when we polish it anyway. Obviously, don't want that exposed to any water. Okay. 1500 looks like it's done a good job. Again, we're going to run over it again and then we'll go to the 2000 grip. All right, guys. We're back again with the 2000 grip. And if you can hear the. It almost sounds like I'm not even rubbing paper. You can barely hear the abrasive rubbing at this point, which is the intention. Now we're not really sanding, we're more polishing. Look, could you take this all the way down to a 2500 then, if you want to take but it's really just not going to be necessary for this kind of work. I mean, I've taken nitro cellulose that smooth and finished it, but that's different. We're not doing that here. This pod, this stuff's pretty hard. It's almost like a plastic. And uh, smooths out pretty good. I mean, if you look really close, you don't see a lot of contrast, just the shininess of it, no. That, that pile is still really thick on there. All we've done is dull the surface. And you feel a little difference in the super glue and the texture of it. But as far as the finish goes, it's pretty nice. Okay. Guys, we're going to go with this a little more. We'll come back home, we'll show you how to polish this guy on that. All right, guys. We're all back again and all. And. You know, I'm going to use a rubbing compound on this before we actually put a polish on it. You could, you know, use a coarse, you don't need a coarse compound on this once you take it all the way down to 2000 grit. This is really slick. It just needs the sheen brought back in it now. But if we had an electric polish or something, that'd be great. But most of us are not going to go spend two or $300 on a really nice polish just to do this. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this with just normal stuff and all. This is a... So this is a medium compound here. I'm just gonna, I've already shaken it up some. I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of work out here, up here, or a little bit out on my work. Get too much, it'll be okay. Don't need a crazy amount on it. Again, just a soft rag, a terry cloth, sock, t-shirt, whatever. Work just fine. We'll work all the way out. A little bit beyond the edges of our work that we were doing. This guy over here had a little bit of work there. We're just going to work it in. We'll run that strap button all the way around it because there's some ugliness in there. And we're just going to keep working this stuff, especially on our problem areas that we have. You don't want it to dry. If it starts drying out, it's going to get down to the finish and just start, you know, scratching again. Rubbed in pretty good. I'm gonna take a clean rag and just rub the stuff off of there. You can see already the shine is starting to come back in it. Really, really getting hard to tell where did the work. You still see a line here. A little slight one there. It's not bad. I mean, obviously, the more you shine, the better it's gonna look. Okay. I'm gonna go back over it again with just the medium to start with. Probably a little bit vast this time. You see how that looks. And the same rag again. And we come back, we'll see how a second coat of medium looks. Okay guys, we're back after a couple of 
rubbing down with the uh, medium grip. If you look at it really close, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, there's a line here where we sand it to. You can see a small sanding line. A couple of little small sanding scratches I saw that the polish kind of told on. <clears throat> Some of these scratches were in it before. I'm not really worried about that. I'm just trying to show you what you can do for your repair, but the repair is really good. I can't snag my finger on it anymore. I mean, yeah, you can still see them. They're not as visible as what they were. But it's still a lot, lot safer. Can't get water in it. I'm just trying to protect this guitar. If your guitar is going to get played, it's going to get scratched up. It's going to get beat up. It's okay. I can live with that. That's not really that big of a deal to me. All right. Well, now we're going to go back with the stuff called Renaissance Wax. I talked about it a little bit before. No, it's a polish or wax. They actually use it in museums. They smear it all over like fine paintings and stuff to protect them. And it's really good wax. It will not harm any surface. Use it on anything. Use it with some ventilation. Use it room not around everybody because it does stink. I mean, it's pretty strong smelling stuff. Got a pretty liberal amount on my rag here. And again, you just kind of work it in. You work it out past where you work it. It's a really slick polish. I mean, it really works in real well. I like it. I like the way it works. Um, and again, just keep rubbing it in. And work it till you barely see a sheen of it. And wipe up any excess that you have and stuff. I mean, obviously, you can still feel it. Let's see how that looks. Might need a little bit more. We'll see. Oh, looking pretty nice now. I mean, that's really hard to see the difference in it. It'd be hard to get a lot nicer from that, short of you know, just literally <laughs> taking this thing and wet sanding the entire guitar all the way down to maybe 3,000 or something and going back and polishing it with a mechanical polisher of some kind. But that's really good. I'm going to rub a little bit more here. Got down here pretty close. White camera nice stuff. Got her pretty close, pretty nice. I can live with it if you want it a little bit nicer. Might have to sand out here a little bit more and blend it in a little bit better than I did. But the finish overall is good, it's protected. It's not gonna have you know water penetrating down in it and cause it to expand out. That's why you cover up any of these holes you're working on. I'm going to go back with a little bit of my favorite polish in the world. It's Dr. Duck's Axe Wax and String Lube. I don't know what's in it, but it works. Okay, check this out. I'm going to take the corner of this rag here and put a tiny drop on it. That's it. That's all I'm going to put on here. It's not even big as a dime, right? And then we're just going to polish it in. Count what I splattered on the guitar. See, it blended in that sand. <laughs> you can't even see it. This stuff is really good stuff. You can rub it all over the guitar. You get on the strings, the hardware, the chrome. It doesn't matter. It doesn't ever dry. You just kind of wipe it off. I like it on the fretboard, especially on rosewood. Because once it's rubbed in, it doesn't really change the color of it, but you can feel it, man. You've just got a residue on your hands. Good stuff. Good stuff. Use it for a string lube. I like something a little different from my string lube, but that's just me. Um, let me show you here. It's counterintuitive to sell this stuff. I bought this a long time ago at a store, like five fifty. I think it's still the same price called Fast Fret. I've had this can for at least 20 years, okay? This stuff is cool. It comes with a little rack. It's got the same rack. It comes with a little canister. It's infused with mineral oil. Check this out. That's how slick that is. You can see the shiny on my finger. Anyway, you just rub it on the strings every so often, acoustic, electric, bass, doesn't matter. Then you just take the little rag and wipe it off and on. There will be a link for this stuff in there too. 
I would suggest buying two or three cans of it. I keep mine on top of my amp and I keep one in the case. That stuff is wonderful. It's good on any stringed instrument. Works really well. Again, let's go back to our polishing here. We've got the axe wax all over it. Okay. Well, I see a few little sanding scratches. Like I said, some over my strap before that were on it. Can't feel the repair. And, okay. Like I said, it's not a professional result, but this is something you can do in about 20 or 30 minutes sitting at home and come out with a really nice finish now. Again, guys, I'm not going to do a follow-up video on this tonight where I sit with the guitar and just show you the work. I'd rather just show you the work up close and show you what we did. Once again, there will be some links to some, some sandpaper and stuff or affiliate links. I am an affiliate. They make a little bit of a commission when you do buy these items. And if you do, I really appreciate it. It helps me out. It helps me buy more materials. and It helps put some money in my pocket for this stuff and all that I don't make my 9 to 5. And uh, we continue to do these kind of videos. Again, comment what you like and what you don't like. Give me some ideas of the next thing you want to see done. We can write about in a blog post at sixstringdoctor.com and show you some stuff there and hopefully we can do a video on it too if i have access to the stuff itself i will do that or we'll research it at least blog about it and talk about it and have a good time with that i'm also excited excited to announce along with the rollout of my website that i'm still in progress and all but it's coming along very nicely all of the different videos are there a little bit of blog post about them and all and also you'll see some banners for zounds a uh, music company and all based out of Illinois. They have, offer really great deals. They've got some really good um, deals on the our payment plans on different guitars. They promise to beat anybody's prices. And also, they they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you buy a new guitar from them and don't like it, you know, within 30 days, you send it back, no questions asked. That's pretty good. I mean, you think they charge shipping on their stuff and all. But there's some banners for that on the website. If you if you're guitar shopping or music store shopping please check that out and keep me in mind and uh but that's about it for now hope we'll be back again soon and we appreciate you guys watching the stream doctor i'm steven and once again you know keep playing them keep tearing them apart keep improving them keep fixing scratching and stuff and keep our hobby going thanks guys and y'all have a good day